Logic loops are a feature in Splunksor that allow users to reduce the operational complexity of building and maintaining playbooks that require repeatable looping functionalities without having to write their own custom code. This iterative function allows users to automatically retry playbook actions if they fail, or continue with the rest of the playbook when the action succeeds. This function can be applied to use cases like sandbox engines for malicious URL, quarantine and remediation, as well as forensic investigation workflows. Let's take a look at how this works. You can turn it on for an action block. So for example, uh, do this thread. Um, what it shows up is you, you have this new tab uh, in that setting itself, it's called looping, and you can turn on looping and you can set it up for let's say 10 times and then pause between one time. You can also go below that, but what we do is we tell you a recommended setting of a minute to four hours. So for example, what we're trying to do here is we want to say loop up to 10 times and pause one minute uh, or one second year between loops uh, as well. So that's the idea behind this particular setting of looping. Uh, and then you also have a timeout setting. So this basically is to guardrail your playbooks from running forever. So what we wanted to do is to say, you know, just exit out um, when you sort of hit that 10 minute mark. So loop will be canceled immediately if not completed within that specific, uh, specific time frame as well. And then we also wanted to provide you a loop exit condition. So whatever condition that you want to add in, um, you know, just pick it, pick it, choose a condition, and then it's equal to the value. So basically this action will loop for 10 times, uh, pausing one second between tries or until the exit condition is met. Or, or the 10 minute mark is reached as well. That's the guardrail. So that's how you sort of configure the loop itself uh, in an action block. You will also see that uh, there's a little loop icon that shows up uh, in your uh, action block itself. Uh, and then also, if you go into the playbook editor and you sort of click on it, you, we also introduce this new button here. It'll tell you the exact looping uh, code in your uh, playbook as well. So that's pretty neat there. So that's your sort of action block. And then you can also do looping on uh, input playbook as well. So for example, you pick this one. What we wanted to do is be supporting loop only on asynchronous uh, actions and not on asynchronous playbooks. So you, uh, that's a point to note. So on the looping itself is very similar. You can turn on looping and then loop exit conditions. Um, with a playbook block uh, also. Um, that's the, the input playbooks, how we want it to do. We also support looping with respect to utility block. And in the utility block, we don't support it on the API. Uh, so that's one thing you need to sort of keep in mind. And this is for your uh, utility block custom, custom code. Um, so the one thing to note as well is that um, the timeout setting. So with respect to uh, the guardrail, we will let the custom function complete before uh, you know closing out the loop as well. So that's another piece of uh, data that you want to note for the utility block. So these are the three things we support looping today on our 6.2 release, and we're working on other use cases as well in the upcoming releases as well. So at a very high level, this is a loop uh, functionality on different blocks. What I wanted to do is I want to walk you through um, sort of before how we used to do it versus now how we want to do it uh, with respect to looping. So this is a simple playbook using attack analyzer. What we're doing is we have a sample container um, that we're taking and then we're sending a malicious URL through the sample container. We're detonating the URL in the attack analyzer sandbox. We're getting a job summary. In the job summary itself, we're saying, hey, uh, before we used to sort of wait uh, either five minutes or 10 minutes uh, for uh, the verdict to come back. With the new looping functionality, we can check it every few minutes or a few seconds and then find a verdict and then you can do whatever you want with that data. So in this scenario, I'm just doing a look up URL, see you know, if it's a phishing URL or not uh, as well. So uh, my configuration is pretty straightforward. I wanna sort of check it 10 times, uh, pause a minute between that. And then of course, if it's over 10 minutes, I just wanna uh, continue the different aspects of the playbook. Uh, and the exit condition is basically saying that uh, the job status itself is, um, the status itself is, is completed uh, in a way. So that's the intent behind it. So if you go back into the playbook editor and then you have the looping functionality, you sort of check the code. This is the loop code uh, that exists uh, within the playbook itself. If you want to sort of alter it. Um, and then what I'm doing here is like, hey, if it's over 10, you know, or 50, whatever, uh, just sort of look at the URL, you can block the URL in, in various different use cases uh, as well. So save, 
atmosphere. And what I have is I have a sample container uh, for 603, so I'm going to do a, it's already there, all artifacts, and I'm going to hit test. So what happens now is basically we are checking the attack analyzer and the job has been kick-started. So as you can see, we're waiting on the score. Um, the first detonation piece of it is completed. We submitted the URL uh, to attack analyzer. And then the first job summary so the score says zero because it didn't really receive any score. So we're waiting on the second iteration to complete. It sort of takes uh, about a minute. And then in attack analyzer case, with the verdict came back um, in the second iteration. Um, so it's just a minute into the whole thing. So basically we're waiting on the job to be completed here um, for us to be able to go through the next steps of it. So let me go back here. Uh, see the uh, the first action job summary was called and we got the result that's false and we're waiting on the second job summary action um, the second iteration of it and we're waiting on the job summary result as well so I'm gonna pause here for one second and just check at what time it's completed so now um, the iteration itself was completed as you can see the second one, so let me go back here. Visually, it's a little bit easier. So we got the score as 100, and then my uh, playbook itself said hey, it's over 10. Sort of go and get the, understand what, look, do a lookup URL as well. So what we do here, um, did a completed of the lookup URL, and as you can see, uh, the verdict is like a phishing URL. So that's the intent behind the loop block. So basically, it's much more efficient. You don't have to wait uh, a few minutes to, you know, get the, the the job completed, and you can sort of you know optimize your playbooks as well. And then, of course, if you have too many uh, loop blocks that are in here, you can turn on um, you know input playbooks uh, to be able to efficiently uh, configure your looping um, functionality. So that's all I had for today. Thank you for listening, and uh, give us some feedback if you do try the functionality. Thank you.